first at five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Severe weather hit the East Coast, including parts of Florida, and the whole state is preparing for tornado drills. Residents will be celebrating the grand reopening of Bo Diddley Plaza this evening with some musical entertainment. Charles Bradley will be performing. And another bomb threat was made today. This one called into a high spring school. That's our top story tonight for Thursday, February 25th. I'm Maria Edinger. And I'm Connor Ingalls. Thanks for joining us. The threat was called into the High Springs Community School. Students were evacuated to the city's community center, where parents were told they could pick up their kids. This follows a bomb threat at Santa Fe High School in Alachua and a series of bomb threats at Buholtz High School in Gainesville. Yesterday, a letter from the superintendent went out to Buholtz families, noting that a student questioned one day was not charged and that the sheriff's office is pursuing other leads. Detectives are said to be reviewing forensic evidence. Uh, we are very anxious to get this, this case resolved and have continued to work very closely with law enforcement on it, and we just wanted parents to know what was going on. With past cases in recent years, law enforcement has made arrests, even catching someone who thought their track phone would not be traceable. The grand reopening for downtown Gainesville's Bo Diddley Plaza will come next month, but with the makeover mostly complete, the venue will host a special event tonight. WUFT's Ariane Ginhuya joins us now live from Bo Diddley. Ariane? Okay. Thanks, Connor. There will be a free concert here tonight at Bo Diddley. This is, a re this is the reopening. This is the pre-opening so that people can come and check out the new additions before the grand opening. After one year and $1.8 million of improvements, Gainesville Bo Diddley Plaza is almost ready to reopen. Tonight, the plaza welcomes a pre-opening event free of charge. Charles Bradley will headline the concert as he returns to his hometown. Uh, he is a 67-year-old uh, soul and R&B musician. He was born in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, he now resides in New York City. He's never played in Gainesville before. This is his first show ever in Gainesville, and uh, he's really excited to be here. Known for his high-intensity show, Bradley has played at Bonnaroo and Coachella music festivals in the past. The Plaza Makeover has been a community-wide effort, and visitors will see many new improvements. I would work with Parks and Rec to add all new LED stage lighting and to add acoustical foam, so you'll find that the sound quality at this event will be better and more superb than any other event on stage before. The concert tonight is sponsored by Frank, an organization for social change holding a conference in Gainesville. The downtown community is excited to finally welcome back Bo Diddley and kick off 15 new events in March. The grand opening is set for March 1st. Live from Bo Diddley, I'm Ariane Gamia. Thank you, Ariane. The vote on the Plum Creek plan looks like it's going to be pushed back yet again. Alachua County Commissioners are now expected to vote on it next Tuesday. That plan would develop land in the eastern part of the county and would require a change to the existing comprehensive plan. Tonight, county officials will be hearing more public comments, and if you want to read further about the Plum Creek proposal, you can go to WUFT.org, click on the News section, then search Plum Creek. Now, yesterday during the day was pretty comfortable, but when I went outside last night, I think I like let out a little, uh, like a little <laughs> yelp. It was so cold when I left. Yeah, well, you should have been here yesterday then because Amanda was warning us about the cold Ooh. UF forecaster. <laughs> Amanda Holly joins us now from the Weather Center and is tracking those cold temps. Amanda, just how cold is it going to get tonight? It's going to be even colder tonight, so if you've thought it was cold this morning, certainly bundle up even more so tomorrow because we've got a reinforcing shot of some colder air and temperatures are going to fall into the upper 30s. We'll be right around 49 degrees by 10 p.m., but notice those clouds come in. That is uh, associated with that reinforcing shot of some cooler air. The wind chills are going to be even colder. Now, these are the actual low temperatures out there uh, for your Friday morning in the upper 30s across North Florida, 38 in Lake City and 39 here in Gainesville, but the wind chills are going to be even colder. And I'm talking in the lower 30s. It's going to feel like uh, below freezing here in Gainesville when the front really moves through, but that'll be before most uh, most of you are awake. By 7 or 8 a.m., it'll be in the mid 30s. Now, coming up, though, I'm, I am tracking some warmer weather, so I will tell you when that arrives. Back to you. Thanks, Amanda. Across the East Coast, 16 tornadoes have been confirmed from Florida up to Pennsylvania. On top of all the destruction in Virginia and South Carolina, four are dead, including a two-year-old boy. Uh, the roof's flying everywhere, and, you know, what can you do? You know, you, you just, you're caught up in it. The storm also dumped snow across the country, delaying or canceling flights. It's still on the move, heading into Canada. 
And this year has been unusually active so far, largely from the current El Nino conditions. 14 tornadoes have touched down so far this year, more than twice the average. Five of them have been unusually strong, rated an EF2 or higher. That's why Alachua County Emergency Management is encouraging you to participate in a statewide tornado drill held tomorrow at 10 a.m. You really need to look for an interior small room that has no windows and you want to get on the ground level as low to the ground as possible and protect yourself um, down on the ground. To participate in the drill, you're asked to take a selfie in your safe place and use the hashtag GatorNATO on social media. The EF3 tornado that hit Pensacola yesterday had winds up to 155 miles per hour, strong enough to destroy multiple floors in an apartment complex or dorm. We hear our own weather team will be participating tomorrow, so look for that hashtag GatorNATO. Today, Representative Keith Perry announced he's running for the state Senate. Perry currently re represents Dixie, Al Gilchrist, and parts of Alachua counties in the House. The Gainesville businessman now hopes to win the new District 8 seat in the Senate, which covers all of Alachua and Putnam counties, along with most of Marion. And the Gainesville mayoral candidates gathered at the Senior Rec Center on 34th Street. The Community Coalition for the Elderly hosted Braddy, Poe, and Shepard for a debate. They focused answers today on issues affecting the elderly. If you want more information about the three candidates, we have our profiles up at WUFT.org. Tomorrow is your chance to weigh in on the future of I-75 and maybe another future highway curving from Tampa to Jacksonville. The Interstate 75 Relief Task Force is holding a series of public meetings to talk about the future. The group is currently focusing on the area west of I-75 from Alachua County to Hernando County. The population is not all that dense, but with all the truck traffic and millions of visitors each year, the stretch of I-75 has serious congestion issues. We have uh, on average of every nine days that I-75, all lanes, one direction, north or south, is closing for a period of time. The big crashes tend to create traffic backlogs that last for hours and put people at risk of secondary crashes. The task force is meeting tomorrow morning at 9 at Trinity United Methodist Church in Gainesville. Meanwhile, the next phase of resurfacing I-75 in Alachua County is about to get underway. Beginning March 6th, the work will target the stretch between Williston Road and the Marion County line. That nine-mile stretch will take about a year to complete. Single lane closures will be common, and double lane closures will be allowed at night, though they'll try to keep traffic flowing on holidays and on UF football weekends. And a crash on I-75 this afternoon backed up traffic just north of Gainesville. The crash involved a motorcycle and a car. The car ended up flipping over, blocking two northbound lanes, though no serious injuries have been reported. In downtown Gainesville, Wise's Pharmacy is open today despite a car taking out a wall of windows yesterday. The building was hit by a driver who lost control of her car. Sheets of plywood and caution tape mark the spot. Gainesville Fire Rescue says the building is still safe for people to occupy. If there's a, any type of structural damage, uh, they may have to undergo some, some testing or, or whatever to make certain that there's no uh, actual damage to, that may cause further damage. The store is in the process of repairing all damage to the exterior. The drive through is still open as well. WUFT News First at 5 is just getting started. Coming up, at least three Zika cases in Florida have been confirmed to involve pregnant women. Plus, February is National Heart Month, and we take a look at what you can do to keep it beating strong. That story and more in our health news segment. And today was noticeably cooler outside with highs only in the low to mid 60s. And I'm tracking the cooler weather, and it is supposed to continue at least through the first half of the weekend. Uh, when we come back, though, I will tell you about some light at the end of the tunnel and some warmer temperatures ahead. WUFT-TV Welcome back. The Republican presidential field has grown a lot smaller, but the stakes are getting higher. Candidates gather tonight in Houston for a debate leading into Super Tuesday when Texas and 10 other states vote. Frontrunner Donald Trump is heading to Texas with increasing momentum, leaving the rest of the GOP trying to slow him down. But no matter how outspoken Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio have become, some analysts are warning the time to block a Trump nomination is running out. You've got the Washington Post with a stunning editorial this morning about stopping Trump. They feel there is some urgency now to stop Trump and that that would create some sort of uh, historic rush toward them in the final days and weeks. 
That history that will start to play out in a few hours when the Republican candidates walk onto the stage at the University of Houston College. Former President George H.W. Bush and his wife Barbara are expected to be at that debate tonight, the first one since their son Jeb dropped out of the race. And in health news tonight, we'll get a Zika update and more. Yeah, Sarah Kimbrough joins us with the latest. If you guys haven't heard of the condition called AFib, don't you worry, we're going to learn more about this treatment tonight. February is Heart Health Month. You have helped hosted a conference on Saturday called AFib in Feb to educate the public about heart disease. WUFT's Stephanie Byrne joins us live from the newsroom with more on what people were able to learn. Well, Sarah, you have helped invited Alachua and Marion County residents to learn about what AFib is and how it can be treated. You're empowering people. You're giving them the tools to be able to take control of their health, to know what they need to talk to their doctors about. Residents from Alachua and Marion counties were invited to the AFib in Feb seminar on Saturday. U of Health physicians spoke at the seminar to educate and raise awareness of heart diseases like AFib. AFib is short for atrial fibrillation, and it's when the heart beats irregularly, which causes blood to pump abnormally. John Linehan was one of the people in attendance. I play golf a couple of times a week. I walk nine holes, drag my cart. About a month ago, John received news that could be a double bogey for anyone. I was recently uh, diagnosed with AFib by the VA. The disease grows more common with age and about 10 percent of the aging population develops AFib. Those who attended the conference today were offered a heart rhythm screening before the seminar started and it's as easy as a pinch of your fingers. People with AFib can live healthy and active lives, however, AFib may also cause stroke. It's, it's important to talk to your physician. Um, it's, it's very much a, a, a condition where the treatment is individualized. As for John, he isn't going to let AFib keep him off the green. Well, I did ask the sports uh, uh, doctor here, and uh, I, I explained to him what, what I had, and, da, 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 and he said yes, that was fine to continue. Those with concerns regarding AFib can also refer to the American Heart Association. Dr. Kaufman says he's looking forward to holding more conferences like this one in the future. Reporting live from the newsroom, Stephanie Byrne, WUFT News. Thanks, Stephanie. A University of Florida study suggests a handful of almonds a day can improve your diet. Researchers tracked 28 parent-child pairs living in North Central Florida. The parents were instructed to eat 1.5 ounces of whole almonds each day for three weeks. The kids were encouraged to eat half ounce or the equivalent in almond butter. After the almond intervention, the parents and children were found to have increased their dietary intake of total protein foods and decreased the intake of empty calories. They're so young and impressionable. If their parents and their whole family is able to eat the almonds and incorporate it into the diet, then hopefully they have lifelong lasting effects and they'll just make like healthier choices um, in the future. The researchers, researchers say over the past 20 years, children three to six have started eating less nuts and seeds while eating more savory snacks like chips and pretzels. But getting them to choose healthier snacks early in life could form habits that carry into adulthood. The Zika outbreak grew more worrisome this week with news that three of the confirmed Florida cases involve pregnant women. The virus usually causes a mild infection, infection, but there is a link to devastating birth defect, making it a vital concern for pregnant women. The count in Florida is now 35, by far the most in any of the 50 states, but 10 cases in U.S. territories, Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands are also worrisome. Most of those infections were locally acquired from mosquito bites, while all the other cases involved international travelers. On the other hand, some good news came out this morning about this year's flu vaccine. According to the Center for Disease Control, people who have gotten the vaccine are 59% less likely to get the flu than those who have not been vaccinated. That's far better than last year when flu strains mutated and the vaccine was only 23% effective. Experts say flu activity is still on the upswing and is expected to continue for several weeks. The CDC recommends a flu shot for just about everyone, but usually only half of Americans get vaccinated. The rates of HPV infections seem to have dropped since the CDC recommended a vaccine. Researchers at the CDC just published a new study on Huma papillomavirus, also known as HPV. The study looks at four types of the virus, two of which are responsible for 66% of cervical cancers in the U.S. 
In just six years, researchers saw the rate of infection among teenage girls drop from just over 11% to below 4. For women between the ages of 20 and 24, the rate of infection fell from 18.5% to 12.1%. There has been a stigma associated with the vaccine because the virus is most commonly spread through sexual contact. Your personal well-being might have something to do with where you live. Healthways just came out with its list of happiest and healthiest cities in the U.S. And two places in Florida are near the top. Healthways says Naples, Florida has the highest well-being in the country. The organization's latest report on the state of well-being says Naples has the lowest levels of stress and depression. The report says the city also has the most people who eat healthy. Salinas, California ranks second on the list, and Florida's Sarasota metro area ranked number three. Healthways gathered the data by conducting more than 170,000 telephone interviews. The report measured well-being on several factors, including whether people liked where they lived and where they worked, and whether they felt financially secure. You've probably heard it before, adults need to sleep at least seven hours a night, but a new study shows more than one-third of us do not get enough shut-eye. A national survey by the CDC shows more than one-third of the U.S. sleep less than seven hours a night. Research shows the less sleep you get, the more risk you have for obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and mental illness. So consider this your wake-up call to start sleeping some more. I know last night I only got about six hours of sleep, so Disc, not, not disc. doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I tend to hover around six or seven, and then when I finally do get eight hours, I feel so refreshed, like uh, ready absolutely. to take on the world. <laughs> yeah, the eight hours is a blessing nowadays. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Okay, so it's cold right now, but I have faith it'll be warm again within the next couple yeah, of days. Absolutely. I mean, Florida can never make up its mind. Amanda, are we right to think this cold won't last too long? Yes, you are. We, I, I am tracking light at the end of the tunnel here in the UF Weather Center. Uh, we do have temperatures returning back to above average, but that's not until the start of next week. I've got two, uh, two big things before I get to that third big thing that talk about some cold temperatures starting tonight. And, you know, it was noticeably cooler this afternoon, but we've got an even colder start to Friday morning as temperatures drop into the upper 30s. But wind chills will be even, even bigger of a factor with uh, feels like temperatures in the 30 to 35 degree range when you step out the door. Now come Saturday morning, the winds we've been experiencing, those are going to die down a little bit and we're going to have just enough low level moisture that I think we could see a widespread frost uh, form Saturday morning. But not until the third point do I get to talk about the warmth and the light at the end of the tunnel there. But temperatures will return back to above average by the start of next week. Tonight, though, as temperatures drop into the mid 40s by 2 o'clock, I notice those clouds start to pick up there. Uh, that's because we have a reinforcing shot of some colder air. It's actually a dry cold front that will be moving through. Not expecting any rain here in North Florida, but temperatures, the cooler air will continue to filter in. And that's the ac that was the actual low temperatures, but here's what it's going to feel like hour by hour. Now, when that cold front actually moves in, I think that's when the coolest of the air will be here, and that's what it will feel like, around uh, 31 degrees by 5 a.m. If you wake up a little bit later than that, it'll feel a little bit nicer in the mid-30s by 7 and 8 o'clock, but still, nonetheless, a cold morning, so certainly bundle up when you head out the door. Friday afternoon, you'll keep the jackets on hand because we only have a high of 62 here in Gainesville, 64 in Ocala. The winds will be around uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour. Now come Saturday morning, it's going to be even colder. 33 is our actual low. This is when we could see that widespread frost with clear and calm conditions out there. Now here is another reinforcing shot. That's why we've got uh, that colder temperature to start our Saturday morning. But we do have a zonal flow on the way, which means uh, winds will start to come out of the southeast, or I'm sorry, the southwest instead of the northeast when we really get that colder air filtering in. It'll come in from the southwest there, bringing us a little bit warmer of air to start and uh, for the middle of next week. But we do have another cold front on the way for Wednesday, and that will bring us another shot of some colder air. But that's a long ways off. Look at, we've got two more days in the 60s, frost likely Saturday morning. Then here's the warming up starting Sunday, right around average. We warm up to near 80 degrees by Wednesday, but then those rain chances do come back into the forecast with the approach of that next front. Back to you. Thanks so much, Amanda. The Florida women's basketball team is back in action tonight. That's right. The Gators are coming off of a loss, but they could get back on track tonight. WUFT sports anchor Ryan Nelson joins us now. That's right. The Gators have lost two of their last three games, but they haven't played themselves out of an NCAA tournament berth. Florida could make an, imp an impression on the selection committee tonight on the road at the LSU Tigers. We'll get you ready for the game. Come on back. Sports is next.
With just two regular season games remaining, the stakes are the highest they've been all season for the Florida women's basketball team. Welcome back to sports. I'm Ryan Nelson. The Gators take their talents to the Bayou tonight to take on the LSU Tigers. Now, the first two time these two teams met, Florida won by a score of 53-45, to their lowest score of the season. On paper, this game is already won, but that's why games are played. The Gators are the are besting the Tigers in every major statistical category. Florida does have, doesn't have the advantage of playing in the Odom, but LSU hasn't done a great job of protecting home court. Florida head coach Amanda Butler says the Tigers will be ready. They're, they're really, really tough, um, you know, physically tough, mentally tough. They're, they're a team that's um, had some, some adversity in the form of injuries and, and other unforeseen things this year. And, and I, you know, you have to really applaud the way that they have navigated that. Right now, there's a five-way tie at third in the SEC standings, including Florida. If Florida finishes in the top four of the conference, they would get a two-day bye in the, in the SEC tournament. You can find coverage on the SEC Network Plus tonight at 8.30. Staying on the hardwood, the Miami Heat took on the Golden State Warriors in Miami last night. The Warriors are off to the best start through 55 games in NBA history. Wednesday marked the 20-year anniversary of the Miami Heat beating the 1996 Chicago Bulls, who previously held that best start record. They tried to channel some of that energy last night in American Airlines Arena, but Steph Curry was surgical from deep right out of the gate. With that shot, Curry tied an NBA record of 127 straight games with a three. Later, Dwayne Wade drives and he finds Hassan, who says hello from the white side. Two of his 21 on the night to go along with 13 rebounds. That's what we call a double-double. So the fourth quarter we go, the Splash Brothers go to work. And Splash, Clay Thompson dropped 15 straight points in the fourth alone. He finished with 33 on the night. Under a minute to go, heater up by one, but not for long. Winner, winner, chicken curry dinner. Curry had 42, and the dub survive in South Beach. They win 118 to 112. If you look up the definition of the word dominant in the dictionary, you'll find, well, the definition of the word dominant, and that's the only way to describe Florida softball season thus far. The Gators have won their first 11 games by a combined score of a 90 to 4, including eight shutouts and eight mercy rule wins. Now, number one ranked Florida gets to play in three, five games in three days in the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic in Palm Springs, California. Going into the Classic, the Gators have gone 60 straight innings without committing an error. Tonight, the Gators will face UCLA and NC State, and tomorrow they face Washington and Nebraska. Saturday, they battle Utah. Florida takes on the Bruins at 8.30 and the Wolfpack at 11 tonight. The Clay Diamonds are glistening in the crown of Florida Athletics. Like the softball team, Florida baseball is ranked first in the country and stands undefeated. Florida is coming off an 8-7 win over Eastern Michigan last night in Lakeland. Now the Gators will face their first true test of the season against the Miami Hurricanes. For the second year in a row, Florida's first road series of the season comes against Miami. Last year, the Gators took two, of, two out of three games down south. Like the Gators, the Hurricanes are undefeated and ranked in the top 10 in the country. A big part of Florida's success on the road this season will be the performance of sophomore catcher J.J. Schwartz. Schwartz has been a consistent offensive force for the Gators. He says he's swinging for the fences. I'm just trying to you know, get on base as much as I can, see as many pitches as I can, be patient, and hopefully get a mistake or something like that. First pitch is set for 7 p.m. tomorrow. Well, under new head coach Jenny Rowland, Florida Gymnastics hasn't skipped a beat. With three regular season meets remaining, the Gators are right in the thick of the national title hunt. Up next, Florida takes on the LSU Tigers in the O'Connell Center. The Gators are looking for a little revenge tomorrow night. Both Tigers, excuse me, both the, the Tigers won both of their meetings against in Ronda Fain's final year as head coach, but Florida's been on fire as of late. The Gators posted their, the nation's fifth highest score to date with a win on the road at Mizzou. Head coach Jenny Rowland says another ranked opponent, no problem. You know, a top seven, seventh in the country right now, so yeah. uh, our Gators, yeah. like I said, they, they thrive. They're always up for an SEC challenge, and this weekend is not going to be anything different. All the action kicks off at 6.45 p.m. And guys, on a personal note, my cousin, who's an outfielder for the Chicago Cubs, announced he'll be returning to the Cubs. His name is Dexter Fowler, and we certainly know where all the athletic talent in the family went. <laughs> <laughs> we do, but that's awesome, man. We, we finally made it, fam. Right, what talented say. genes. All right, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> and, uh, all right, personal note here. You know, I was going to read this story, but I know how much you love space, so yes. out of the kindness of my heart, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, this is great. And now I'll have an easier time finding my way around the final frontier. An observatory in Europe has mapped out our entire home galaxy. And as an added bonus, it doesn't just have visible light. It shows everything from infrared to radio waves as well, making it the sharpest map of the Milky Way galaxy to date. 
And before I spend all my time looking that up, before we go, let's get one last check on the weather. Here's Amanda. It'll be a cold night tonight. Very brisk wind in the morning. We'll make it feel between uh, 30 and 35 degrees out there. So certainly bundle up and the cold doesn't stop there. A high of only 62 on Friday. The 60s last through Saturday. We return back to above average Sunday and then well above average by the end of next week. Back to you. Thanks, Amanda. We'll be back tomorrow at 5, but your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Here on WUFT TV, BBC World News is up next, and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7 o'clock. Have a good night.